make you a pow pow juggernaut. Take it up a notch. Oh my god, wow, take a out. Let me take a shot. I'ma sit down, get it back back. <laughs> Okay, I think I might want to see that one. Get ready for a fun summer at the movies. Despicable V3, the one that you're just seeing right now, is just one of the many films coming to a theater near you. And here with a look at what's now playing or about to is our resident movie reviewer, Dr. Drew Mignot of KDKA TV. Thanks for being here. Well, you're already here. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for coming into the studio for a few minutes. Not a problem. So uh, let's talk about some of the big hits. We know that uh, Fast and Furious, the latest edition of that, Fate of the Furious, w did pretty well, but so yes. did Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman did really well. And uh, again, hats off to uh, Gal Gadot, uh, who was the perfect choice to play this part. I think that was part of the key. And um, also Patty Jenkins, the director, I think brought a sensibility that we haven't seen in movies like this. Uh, but I was a big, big fan of this movie. I liked uh, Gal Gadot and her cameo in Batman versus Superman. When I saw that movie, I couldn't wait to see the standalone movie, and this absolutely lived up to my expectations. I thought it was great. And that is still in theaters, if you still want to check still it out. Still in theaters, and in five weeks, it has brought in $346.6 million, so wow. it's doing well. A lot of superhero movies doing well recently. I yes. Feel like. Um, and so moving on to some of the other movies that we have, what, Book of Henry, that is that is done pretty well? Uh, actually, it's kind of struggling. This is, oh, uh, is. Naomi Watts, uh, Sarah Silverman, and uh, Pittsburgh superstar Maddie Ziegler. Um, I'm a big fan of Maddie Ziegler. Uh, when I first saw her videos, I made a point of sending a, an email to Jill, our producer, saying, you, you know, you really need to take a look at this lady. She brought her in and uh, was on the show, and look what's happened since. You know? <laughs> you know? Is, oh, so it's oh, all well, you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. No, I think she's a very talented lady, and I'm not taking credit for any of that. Um, but the movie, unfortunately, I'm not a fan of this movie. I thought it was kind of preposterous and outrageous. The um, story is about Henry, an 11-year-old boy who's kind of a boy genius. Uh, he lives with his younger brother and his single mom. Uh, he manages mom's finances and financial investments while mom sits on the couch all day playing video games, you know. So about halfway through this movie, I started wondering if this script might have been written by an 11-year-old. Because, oh, <laughs> yeah, it just... It was that bad. Yeah. Uh, Henry suspects that his cute classmate and next-door neighbor, played by Maddie, is being abused by her stepfather, and so he devises this plan, this deadly plan to resolve things. Um, Again, the movie has not gotten positive reviews, uh, didn't do well at the box office, but that's not Maddie's fault. Uh, I think she can add this to her list of accomplishments, put this on her resume, and hopefully in the next time around she will hook up with a much better script and a better director. Great. Well, and let's move on to Cars 3, something for the kids. Yeah, uh, High Octane Entertainment from Pixar. Now, Pixar is the company that brought us Toy Story, Finding Nemo, Monsters, Inc., right. The Incredibles, Wall-E. I mean, nothing but hits. This one uh, features Owen Wilson as the voice of Lightning McQueen, the main character. Paul Newman's voice is in this. Now, recall that Paul Newman passed away in September of 2008. But they had enough voice clips, you know, he had, was in recording and outtakes that they were able to piece together some dialogue and actually, you know, bring his character back in this That's movie, incredible. which was great. Yeah, this has all the thrills of NASCAR racing. You could practically smell the tires burn in this movie. It's that good. Uh, great digital effects, audio effects, Randy Newman music track. Uh, and as always, there's a great story here and a positive message, you know, themes about aging, um, mentoring, um, empowerment, passing the torch, you know. Um, so in all the great, you know, uh, Pixar movies, there's a great story. and This is no exception. And Baby Driver. We were actually looking up the trailer for this the other day when we were thinking about going to the movie. Yeah, Baby Driver. You know, uh, strange title. And no, this is not an animated movie about babies driving cars. Right, and which... that's what I thought. I said, is it a comedy? What is it? It's I... actually like a high oh, yeah. action-packed thriller. But I had right? people ask me that question. This yeah. is from director Edgar Wright. Uh, his other movies include Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. He's a young British writer-director. Um, this is a dream project of his. He wanted to write a movie about a character that is passionate about music. Edgar Wright, when he's writing and working, loves music like all the time. So this character, Baby, is a young guy with amazing driving skills. He falls in with the wrong crowd with some criminals and has to basically buy his way back out again by being a driver when they do their bank heists, you know. So he's got to kind of work that off and get out of there. Um, the criminals, by the way, the head criminal is uh, Kevin Spacey, a really scary guy. Um, this has some of the best stunt driving you will ever see. It's up there with movies, I think, uh, like Bullet, uh, The French Connection, The Blues Brothers. These are real cars, real drivers, real stunts. This is wow. not digital, you know, uh, trickery. This is all the real thing. Um, uh, the character Baby, by the way, is played by Ansel uh, Elgort. 
who uh, co-starred in the movie The Fault and Our Stars that was shot here in Pittsburgh back in 2014. I remember that one. Uh, yep, and uh, I, I was a big, big fan of Baby Driver. It's just uh, a thrill ride. It's, it's definitely worth seeing. So I, I know that sequels usually don't do well uh, in regular movies, but it seems that when you're talking animated films, the more you do, still does well. People never get enough of it. Uh, Despicable Me 3, I think, is what we're talking about. That yeah. opened last weekend. The voices of uh, Steve Carell, uh, Kristen Wiig, Trey Parker from South Park uh, supplies a voice in this one of the, the villain. Uh, Carell this time does the voices of two characters, Gru from the original two movies, mm -hmm. and uh, now this is Dr uh, Gru's uh, twin brother, Drew, D-R-U. <laughs> um, these movies are crazy cute. They're silly summer entertainment. The Minions are back, of course. You know, that's a big draw. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Gru is lured back into a life of villainy and crime after he and his wife are fired from the anti-villain league, and uh, so he and his brother uh, are going to steal the world's, you know, biggest diamond. Um, again, I mentioned the minions are back. They're so bad that they end up in jail, and so part of it becomes kind of a jail breakout movie. Uh, this movie did uh, a pretty good opening weekend, about $75.5 million this past weekend. Believe it or not, that was about $10 million shy of what they were expecting. Still a very strong opening weekend for Despicable Me 3. Yeah, I think my daughter would love that. And moving along, what's this next one about? The Beguiled, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is a remake of a movie that was done back in 1971 with Clint Eastwood, uh, and it was directed by Eastwood's favorite director, a guy named Don Siegel. Uh, it's a story about a soldier in the Civil War, a Union soldier who is wounded. Uh, he is taken in by uh, girls at a girls' school in Virginia. Um, he's the only guy there. This is, you know, it's a secluded situation. You can understand immediately the, the tension, you know, that's going to be happening, you know, uh, emotionally and, and sexually. is very, uh, very charged. This version of the movie was done by uh, Sofia Coppola. Uh, the daughter of Francis Ford Coppola, the guy who did the Godfather series. She just won uh, the award for Best Director at the Cannes Film Festival, so she's getting some real attention for this. Um, the co-stars in this movie are Nicole Kidman, uh, Kirsten Dunst, and Elle Fanning. It's a really strong cast. Um, and my take on it was it's a really interesting film, very dark, and I mean literally dark. Yeah, it's, it looks that way in the trailer. Yeah, yeah, very underlit, you know, it's kind of hard sometimes to really see the characters. I, uh, she kind of, in my opinion, went a little too far with that, but that was a, you know, a, tr a choice that she made as a director. A uh, very toned down version of the original, uh, but she made this movie on a budget of only $10.5 million, which is a, a shoestring budget right. these days, and so far it's earned back about $3.5 million. And what about Spider-Man Homecoming? Yeah, your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man is back. This time he's played by Tom Holland, uh, who made his debut in uh, Captain America Civil War. Uh, he had a, a cameo in that movie. Um, this movie begins where that movie left off. Uh, they're kind of cleaning up the damage from this uh, uh, big climactic battle. There is, uh, you know, wreckage, uh, you know, everywhere. Pittsburgher Michael Keaton plays a blue-collar boss of a bunch of guys that are cleaning up the wreckage, and they discover this alien technology uh, that uh, uh, Michael Keaton decides to use for himself. So he kind of goes, you know, down a dark direction with that, creates uh, a winged character, a villain known as Vulture in this movie. But recall that Michael Keaton played another winged superhero uh, in that Oscar-winning movie uh, Birdman a couple of years ago. So he's back with a pair of wings on again. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. is this one as uh, is back in this one as uh, Tony Stark, uh, uh, Iron Man. This is the third franchise startup in recent memory, if you think about it. Um, the original trilogy for Spider-Man was back in 2002 with uh, Tobey Maguire. I remember that. Yeah. Yep, and that was the first film, by the way, the first one in that series, the first movie to surpass the 100 million dollar markets opening weekend. It was wow. that successful. Um, they came su superheroes. Oh yeah. Well, they do. came back a couple years later with Andrew Garfield uh, that did two movies and now they're back uh, with this one, um, uh, Homecoming. Uh, what I liked about this, they resisted the temptation to do the origin story again, which seems like everybody feels obligated to do. Yeah. Thank goodness they Just skipped that. Just picked up where they left exactly, off. Exactly, right. So it's entertaining, fresh, fun. He's got a high-tech uh, Spider-Man suit with all kinds of gadgets. It's a fun story. And what about War for the Planet of the Apes? Yeah, uh, let's do a brief history of this one. You know, the original movie started in 1968 uh, with Charlton Heston. Uh, that spawned four movie sequels, a TV series, 
Tim Burton remade the movie in 2001 with Mark Wahlberg, uh, and then this whole new series began in uh, 2011, uh, shifting the focus of the story to Caesar, the leader of the uh, the intelligent apes. Uh, my favorite movie, I got to say, in the bunch is the original, um, because of the ending. You know, everybody talks about the Twilight Zone ending at the at the end of the original uh, Planet of the Apes. Uh, no surprise there. That movie was co-written by Rod Serling, the guy who was the creator of the Twilight Zone. I'm not sure that I'll ever top that, but the technology now has gotten really good. Uh, that's what makes these movies worth seeing. Okay, and very quickly, Dunkirk. Yeah. Yeah, this is big. Uh, a return to the epic war film, a movie by uh, Christopher Nolan. You know the event, real event, uh, back in the, the early days of World War II. Uh, there were uh, 338,000 soldiers who were rescued from the beaches of Dunkirk, France, when they'd been pushed back by the Germans. Um, uh, local fishermen uh, put, pulled together 800 boats and saved. 338 soldiers who might have been annihilated on those beaches that might have turned the war around. Directed by Christopher Nolan, who was here in Pittsburgh years ago, uh, directing The Dark Knight Rises back in 2012. Yeah, and that one comes out July 21st. Drew, thank you as always for stopping to chat with us. Yeah. We'll send you back to your office. Okay. You have work to do today? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, Drew Mignot, our resident KDKA movie reviewer, member of the Broadcast Film Critics Association, and head of our KDKA TV commercial production team, thank you very much. So I guess you get to go home then. I do. Okay, good. Very good. Well, up